morning friends my name is M Manudeep today we are here to discuss about chemistry and our topic is gonna be organic chemistry so friends what is organic chemistry organic chemistry is a branch of chemistry which deals about the properties of carbon and its conjugated compounds is called organic chemistry let me explain so this is carbon carbon has tetravalency it means carbon can bond can form covalent bonds with four different atoms or same atoms it means let me say carbon can be bonded with halogens carbon can be bonded with hydrogen carbon can be bonded with nitrogen and carbon can be bonded with oxygen so on etc etc so a branch of chemistry which deals about the properties of carbon and its conjugated compounds is called organic chemistry so now why carbon has got these these much of specialty this kind of specialty among so many elements in the periodic table that's because of a property of carbon called catenation catenation so what is catenation 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 is a property of an atom of an element to bond with the same element thus by forming a series it means let me say carbon carbon atom property of an atom of an element to bond with same element is called catenation this property this kind of phenomenon readily occurs readily happens with carbon so carbon can form lots of series chains carbon chains so carbon has these much of specialty these kind of specialty as carbon can form readily bonds with other different car same carbon atoms in a series this property is called catenation so carbon has these kind of specialty so organic compounds are present very vastly in the living systems and non-living systems also so so let's discuss about uh, history of organic chemistry around 300 years ago 300 years ago scientists started had started to differentiate between organic compounds and inorganic compounds according to scientists who are who are in those days organic compounds are present only in the living systems and they cannot be present outside the living systems and they cannot be synthesized out in the laboratory it means outside the living system so based on this theory based on this hypothesis in 1815 in 1815 a sweden chemist a Sweden chemist, he belongs to Sweden, chemist named Berzelius, I proposed a theory called vital force theory. Vital force theory. Or it, it may be also called as vitalism. So, according to Berzelius vital force theory, organic compounds are present only in the living systems and they cannot be present outside the living systems and they can be synthesized only in the living systems by itself. For example, in living systems, there are some organic compounds, biomolecules like DNA, RNA, these are nucleic acids, nucleic acids and proteins and carbohydrates. These are organic compounds present in the living system since these uh, they are present in the living system these are considered as biomolecules. So according to vital force theory organic molecules are present only in the living systems but not outside the living systems and they cannot be synthesized in the laboratory it means outside the living systems so so what do you mean by vital force <coughs> vital force Berzelius explained vital force as an unimaginable unpredictable force between carbon and its conjugated molecules which is responsible for holding that molecule to the carbon it means let me explain let me say carbon is bonded with uh, some other molecule let me say x so the interaction the interaction between carbon to its conjugated molecule or the mole or, or an atom or a molecule which is bonded to the carbon atom this force this force of attraction 
responsible for bonding carbon to its conjugated compound is called vital force. He has explained, he has determined vital force as this. Vital force is nothing but an unimaginable, unpredictable force between carbon to its conjugated compound which is responsible for the formation of carbon conjugated compounds is called vital force. So, according to his vital force theory, organic molecules are, I mean, organic molecules are bonded together, are held together intact by a special force called vital force and they cannot be synthesized outside the living systems and they can be present only in the living systems. So, after this vital force theory, in 1828, A German chemist is a Sweden he belongs to Sweden. A German chemist named Frederick Kohler. Frederick Kohler. Frederick Kohler had synthesized urea in the laboratory from ammonium cyanate. Let me write reaction. NH4CNO this is ammonium cyanate cyanate upon heating it forms urea NH2 C double bond O NH2 this is urea so, he had prepared urea in the laboratory from ammonium cyanide. But before 1828, it means before Frederick Kohler, what's the theory which scientists used to believe? That is vital force theory. According to vital force theory, organic compounds cannot be synthesized outside the living systems. They can be present only in the living systems and they are synthesized by the living systems itself. But what Frederick Kohler had proved, he had synthesized urea from ammonium cyanide in the laboratory outside the living systems. So, he had countered Berzelius vital force theory. So, in 1828 AD, Berzelius vital force theory was rejected. Rejected. Frederick Kohler had disproved vital force theory which says organic molecules are present only in the living systems and they are held by vital force. So, in 1828 AD, Frederick Kohler was awarded Nobel Prize in Chemistry. So, so uh, soon after uh, Frederick Kohler, which had synthesized urea, there are so many preparations were made in the laboratory. Like, in 1845, Coal have prepared acetic acid CH3 COOH and in 1856 Berthlot I prepared methane CH4 so, uh, soon after uh, preparing uh, these, these kind of organic molecules in the laboratory and knowing uh, organic molecules can also be prepared in the laboratory, so soon after the scientists had to think about, scientists uh, had um, focused on about determining the structures of organic compounds, structures and properties of organic compounds and the nature of bonding between organic compounds. So, this is a general introduction of organic chemistry according to our NCRT textbook. Okay, friends, uh, previous class we have discussed about general introduction of organic chemistry. Now, let's discuss this introduction in brief. Important points to be noted. So, organic chemistry is a branch of chemistry which deals about the carbon compounds, properties of compounds, and and carbon conjugated compounds. So why carbon has got this kind of specialty? That's because of its property called catenation. Catenation in a simple way, 
can be defined as a property of an element to to get bonded with the same element thus by forming chains simple catenation can be defined as chain forming tendency chain forming capacity of an element so comparing with other elements among the periodic table carbon can readily form very easily form covalent bonds with same ca other carbon atoms thus by forming a chains and series so carbon so carbon compounds and these organic compounds are present very widely in the living systems and non living systems <coughs> so during 1700s during 1700s scientists used to believe that organic compounds are present at present in living systems in living systems and not present in non living systems non living systems non living systems so based on this this hypothesis in 1815 ad in 1815 ad sweden chemist berzelius put forward a theory called vital force theory vital force theory or vitalism so according to vital force theory organic compounds compounds are present in living systems organic compounds are not present in non living systems systems organic compounds can be synthesized only in living systems systems by itself and organic compounds can not be synthesized in non living systems so what exactly vital force mean so what exactly vital force mean vital force is nothing but uh, attraction or unimaginable he defined vital force as an unimaginable unpredictable force which is responsible which is responsible for the bonding between carbon and to the other compound for a <coughs> carbon is bonded with some other molecule so this this bond this force of attraction this kind of unimaginable un unimaginable force which is responsible to hold carbon to its con conjugate compound he explained these kind of these attraction these bonding as vital force so countering this vital force theory in 1828 a german chemist berzelius frederick wohler had prepared urea from ammonium cyanate in the laboratory heating upon heating analogous arrangement and forms urea so frederick kohler had prepared urea in the laboratory from ammonium cyanate so but according to berzelius vital force theory what did he say organic compounds are present only in the living systems and they cannot be synthesized or they cannot be prepared outside the living systems in the laboratory but what frederick wohler had proved he had synthesized urea from ammonium cyanate in the laboratory so in 1828 ad berzelius vital force theory was rejected and in 1828 ad itself frederick wohler got nobel prize
in chemistry so friends important point here to remember is urea was the first ever organic compound to be prepared in the laboratory so soon after this uh, path breaking path breaking preparation of frederick wohler in the organic chemistry there are so many preparations were made by scientists in, in among those according to our ncrt textbooks in 1845 called a prepared acetic acid ch3coh in 1856 birth lot a prepared methane ch4 so this is a brief about uh, general reduction of organic chemistry